the PlayStation Classic. Some might said it failed, but the hacking community said, heck yeah, $20 for a single board computer. And that's exactly what this video is about. And a long time ago, I did the OTG mod to basically allow you to hook up, you know, 256 gigabyte thumb drives full of games and unlock the potential of this board. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to get it back to stock so we can add the new AutoBleam 0.9.0. The big deal about that is it's even better, more functionality, and it's only one program you have to install. So it's never been easier to hack your PlayStation Classic, and the features, functionality, and emulation potential you're gonna get has never been better. So we're gonna go restart from get it back to stock and then install. If you have a brand new one you just bought on Amazon, you can also follow this tutorial, just skip the first part. So for this part of the video, if you have an older version of Bleem Sync already, if you followed my old tutorial from many, many, many months ago, um, this is how I'm gonna reset my PlayStation Classic back to stock. So here's your Bleem Sync. All you have to do is create a new text document. Um, go ahead and just open it up. You don't even have to write anything, just go save as. Go ahead and do all files here. Go to all files here, go ahead and do quote, uninstall quote, all caps. Go ahead and we want to save that, our, our desktop for now. Save. All right, great, and just look who popped up. It should look like that. It shouldn't look like your text document over here. And then we want to put that in Bleem Sync and flags, uninstall, copy it to the card. And then we'll remove the car, we'll remove the USB thumb drive and plug it into player two slot on our PS Classic. All right, so I'm using OTG cable here and I'm using the Samsung 128 gigabyte. It is a USB 3.0 and that's because my PlayStation Classic was already hacked. If you have an unhacked PlayStation Classic brand new, you could skip this step um, and just go straight to the install where you do need a USB 2.0 thumb drive. But what I did here is I just connected everything to the OTG. I, inst I added that uninstall file for my computer. Now we're gonna boot it up for the first time. Remember, plug in the USB while everything is off, then turn plug it in, then turn it on, and then just it prompts you with this. Go ahead, and once it prompts you this, un take your USB thumb drive out, turn it back on, and now it's uh, stock. If you want, you can initialize the console and get it back to stock as well. So over here on the right side, you can see I went ahead and downloaded the AutoBleam 0.9.0. I've opened it up with WinRAR, and here are the contents that I'm gonna need. On the right side here, I have my USB 2.0, that's drive F. What I wanna do is go ahead and format it. Go ahead and click format. I wanna do FAT32 and I wanna label it SONY, all caps, S-O-N-Y, all capitals. Go ahead. So I went ahead and formatted it. All right, now I have a fresh formatted drive and all you gotta do is just copy all this stuff over. Boom. And then once that's done, we'll put out of our computer and switch over to the PS Classic. You do need a USB 2.0, um, thumb drive, I'll go ahead and link some to that. We've set this up. It has our new AutoBleam on it. And we're gonna go ahead and plug that into slot number two. We have our HDMI, we have our controller. Pretty simple, right? Nothing's connected to the OTG. Let's go ahead and turn our switch on. The amber light will come on. And then you can turn it on. All right. And um, if, if you don't get the auto bleam screen right here, it's about to show up, then the, your USB drive probably is not formatted correctly, not set up correctly, or just not compatible with the amount of, uh, with, with the PlayStation will recognize, but it worked. If you just go straight to like the original PlayStation with all the games, that's, you gotta go backwards. All right, now um, the background music is gonna be on. I highly recommend just going to um, options, I think you select, yeah, and just turn off the background music really quick. Just hit over to the left. And then um, to get to audibly, you just hit enter or start on the controller. And now we are on the home screen, but we're just gonna hit select on our controller twice. And that's gonna bring us into the apps. And all this stuff comes pre-installed. This is nothing new. The last version had all this stuff, but it's still pretty cool, right? And, uh, but now we have network configuration, which is awesome, we'll show you that and then the kernel installer. The reason we wanna install this is gonna allow for all the OTG support, allow for a lot more you know, compatibility. Um, it is gonna hack your kernel though. Um, you can always revert this later. 
Um, but again, if you're watching this video, I mean, you, you, you mod your stuff a little bit, it's, it's gonna be okay. So we're just gonna press okay. Do you wanna do it? You can read that if you want, press okay. And then, then all you gotta do is press X to flash. Do you wanna confirm? Yes, X again. It's creating a backup. And I'm just gonna let this play live so that you can see the um, amount of time it takes to update your kernel. Once the kernel is updated, we could start using that OTG cable and you know add all sorts of things. So it just turned off. My amber light is on here. You probably can't see that. My screen is actually blank. My capture card just is stuck on the last screen it saw. All right, y'all, here's my new setup. Now that I'm using the USB 3.0 and I'm on OTG, I uh, have the OTG cable hooked up to a USB hub, which is has its own standalone power. And I have now my 128 gigabyte 3.0 with some games on it. I have a Bluetooth adapter and I have a Wi-Fi adapter. Look at that, pretty cool. You can also add a second player controller, a third player controller. You have many options here. Remember when, uh, before you hook all this stuff up, just make sure everything is unplugged. I would just turn everything off, make sure it's totally off. So we're booted up here and I just hit, once you're in Autobleam, hit select, select, and then here we are. I've added uh, Magnus RC's old build to this current build. This, but uh, we still have the network activity. And unfortunately, bummer, this network adapter does not work. Um, I'll link to one that supposedly works. And uh, what you would do is when the network adapter is set up here, you just hit select on your controller. And on this screen here, this is where you pick your Wi-Fi, type in your password, change your time zone, and now you'd have internet access. Pretty sweet, right? It did find my Bluetooth dongle. So now I could technically hook things up via Bluetooth, maybe a speaker, a controller, um, more to come on that on a later video. Easy peasy. Fight. And lastly, the final big deal about this new addition is Emulation Station. So for those of you that watch my videos, RetroPie uses Emulation Station. You're going to be able to see all your systems up here like you normally would. We could potentially see more themes all sorts of cool stuff, easy uh, controller configuration, all kinds of cool stuff. So this right here, what you're looking at, is really exciting stuff. I think you're gonna see some cool images. And if you follow my channel, you know I do a lot of retro pie builds and that's all based on this. So that is cool, really cool. Look at that. So everything you get with the Raspberry Pi. A lot of people don't know that emulation station, you can you could put emulation station on a PC right now. It doesn't have to be the Raspberry Pi. It just tends to be on the Pi a lot. People put it on the Odroid, many, many other things. All right, so there's the video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it explains some of the, the issues. Remember, you know, it depends whether you're starting straight from scratch or you're starting with a pre-hacked console. Um, also, keep in mind that this is just the, the, the build itself. There's going to be people that are going to throw on games for you and get it all set up for you. Um, in the near future. I'll be sure to check those out as they happen. But um, I hope this worked out for you. Let me know if you have any questions. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.